clay shooting is quite a complicated thing. Buying and choosing a gun is quite complicated. Choosing what to put in it is seemingly equally a minefield that nobody pays attention to. So today we're gonna to look at clay cartridges. What about them? Which ones to buy? Which ones are best? What is best? Um, so we've got a selection here of some whole cartridge, the finest ammunition. Let's cut some open, have a look, and talk about why perhaps cheap cartridges would be good and why perhaps the best cartridges are better. So let's start with the basics and then work through to the more complicated stuff. This is a shotgun cartridge. I know, fascinating. It is a component of a few parts, I suppose. On the outside, you have a primer and the brass. Then you have the case or the hull. Inside, this depends on the cartridge. Obviously, these things can look very different. You have the powder. That is the bit that makes it go bang. Well, so part of the part that makes it go bang, the part that pushes this wad and the shot that goes in the shot cup in front of a plastic wad out of the front of the gun. So we pull the shot out. As you can see, there it is. Each of the components of a shotgun cartridge can vary absolutely massively. And that can affect the outcome. The outcomes being consistency. Consistency is king. Cheaper ammunition will generally be less consistent than high quality ammunition. Most, uh, shot going everywhere. Most loading technology now will have shotgun cartridges more consistent than they have ever been. Modern powders, modern shot, and modern techniques. Oh, I mean, cartridges are probably the best. They are the best they've ever been. They might not be the cheapest. That's because the world is getting more expensive. But as long as you're not buying an awful quality cartridge, the consistency will be good. Spending a little bit more will get you slightly better consistency, generally speaking. Speed. Speed does and doesn't matter in equal measures. A slower cartridge will break clays, providing that the content of the cartridge is good and they pattern well. I've shot some unbelievably slow cartridges. And guess what? The clays break just the same at distance. A lot of it doesn't really matter. Most cartridges if they're being retailed, are probably good. That's it. Buying a cartridge with necessarily another 100 feet per second or 125 feet per second over another cartridge, so super fast next to compact, for example, isn't going to make you a better shot. It might make me feel more. You'll make you feel more confident. It might make you feel more confident. But generally speaking, speed does not matter half as much as people think that it does on the majority of targets. Now, when we're talking about longer range stuff, that can come into play. But most targets are very breakable with a 1,350 feet per second, 21 gram cartridge. Most targets you'll see anyway. Now let's look at this here, the cartridge information. Caliber 12, 12 bore. We're assuming that 95% of the market of clay shooters are probably shooting 12 bores. If you wanna shoot a 20 bore, that's great, but I'm not gonna talk about it in this video. Shot size. This is a six and a half or two and a half millimeters. Generally speaking, most cartridges for, well, for sporting clays are gonna be seven and a half and eights. Seven and a half and eights. They're the recognized shot size. They look an awful lot like this. This is in a seven and a half, 2.3 millimeters. That's not a great deal of shot size, but the impact difference between a seven and a half and a six and a half is a little bit. The difference between a seven and a half and eight is not great, but People will prefer the patterns and the same cartridge in different shot sizes. For example, a Sovereign Fiber 8 versus a Sovereign Fiber 7.5 may pattern differently through your gun and you may prefer the performance of one over another. 8 is a 2.2, 7.5 is a 2.3. A lot of it is in your head, but you've got to be happy with what you're shooting. Uh, when it comes to certain disciplines, skeet for example, you will be shooting nines, perhaps eights. We're not going to talk about that too much either. Load. Load of a cartridge is 28 grams. 28 grams is the maximum pretty much for all clay shooting now. Every ground you go to will have a 28 gram limit. It used to be back in the day, I mean, you'll see some Winchester AA traps at 32 gram. I think there was like a 36 gram limit for Fitask internationally back in the day. So there used to be higher levels. They're now brought down. Certain international disciplines, I think Olympic trap, 24 gram maximum. There you go. So if you're shooting specific disciplines, make sure you're shooting a load well within the limits of what you're allowed. That is a maximum, by the way. You can go and shoot a 24 gram if you want. However, most people see that 
lack of balls, because that's four grams less. I'm gonna keep pouring these in and out of my hand all video. That's four grams less balls. That is less dense pattern. That is technically less chance of hitting a clay, if you like. And psychologically moving from a 28 to a 30 gram, no, sorry, from a 24 to a 28 gram, the brakes will be better, that will make you feel better, get your head in the right space, chipping a target's great, puffing it out of existence is better. Simples. So 28 gram is the accepted standard for just about everything now. The, well, I say just about everything. It's either 28 or 24 gram, depending on what you're doing. Make sure where you're going has limits. Also be aware that most grounds now are fiber wad. Ah, sorry, length, length first, 70 millimeter. Check the chamber length on your gun. Most clay guns are gonna be 70 mil. If you're shooting an older gun, a side by side, for example, it may be 65 or 67 mil. Some people out there will say and argue that having a cartridge appropriate to your chamber perfectly matched will give you slightly better consistency and performance on a pattern plate. It's at points like that, a bit like arguing about 18.3 versus 18.4 bores, that actually just changing your cartridge completely will probably change your pattern a little bit more. And if you have a multi-choke, changing your choke will, will give you more variables. A lot of people are really after getting all of the gas down their gun as best possible and getting as much pressure and speed and consistency as possible. Which brings me on to the wad. Here are the wads. This is the overpowered card. This is the wad. This is a plastic wad, it's a complete unit. Most grounds, or a majority of grounds, certainly in the south at least, are fiber wad. This is because plastic, unless you are in a more controlled environment, can end up as litter. If there's animals grazing, it can go inside animals. That said, I've never yet seen an example of an animal eating it. I think it's just more on those scavenging things. A lot of it just boils down to the ability to contain the plastic wads, because littering with plastic is bad depending on the situation, right? If it's a ground with big bunding and all the plastic lands inside, I don't see a problem with it. They can pick it up and do what they want with it. People prefer plastic wads, generally speaking, where possible because you get a bar better barrel seal. What this means is slightly higher velocities for slightly lesser recoil. Plastic wads also have the benefit of a shot cup. A shot cup holds the shot together inside the barrel. It keeps it from deforming a little bit because there's a little bit of a spongy leeway there. It also keeps it together for a little bit longer outside of the barrel, so it changes your pattern. It doesn't improve it, it just changes it. People argue that this wad here gives less of a good seal, even though this is bigger than the shotgun bore size, so it's gonna give a good seal, a plenty good enough seal. However, obviously this plastic wad, wad has multiple good quality, 100% sealing rings, and you have this, well, they're designed for a better gas seal. What you can get is fiber wads with a little plastic obturator. And ongoing, we've got vegetable plastic wads, biodegradable wads, all sorts of wads coming out. So if you want the plastic wad performance, you can get that without using plastic wads. However, the shooting grounds that are fiber wad only, as far as I know, most of them don't want you using those yet. I said before, by the way, about the skeet, you can use eights, you can't, it's nines or tens. And generally speaking, the maximum shot allowable shot size at most competitions is a six. Some people do cap it at seven and a half though. There you go. The reason for a bigger shot size is larger balls, more energy at range. Good, right? However, a less dense pattern at close range, which th there's positives and negatives. Pick one you like. Pick one you like. So you've picked the cartridge that you like that fits the job that you do. What is the difference between a cheap cartridge and an expensive cartridge, you ask? Well, the best analogy that was ever given to me was the bottle of wine analogy. A bottle of wine can cost five pounds, right? The, the packaging costs a pound. The tax is a pound. The shop makes a pound. The delivery is a pound and the marketing is a pound. And what's in it probably is pish. Now, if you spend eight pounds on a bottle of wine, there's more likely to be three pounds of wine inside the bottle of wine. This is the analogy. Is it cost a certain amount to make a cartridge? I think we can all agree that it just costs a certain amount to make a cartridge. The cheapest hulls in the world, or the cheapest hulls, the cheapest brass, the cheapest primers, the cheapest shot, the cheapest wad, put all together is still gonna cost a certain amount of money because of the delivery of the tax, the wages, you're still paying a man to put together, you're paying for the machines, you're paying for all these things. So actually, you're getting much higher quality price-wise components in the better ammunition for not a great deal more. So at the moment, the world is changing, so prices do go up. A entry-level, good quality shotgun cartridge for clay shooting 
in a 28 gram fiber wad is about 200 quid. Give or take, 220 maybe. Well, hey, that video just lasted another three years, that's clever. Um, and a good quality shell costs to about 260 to 280, maybe 300 pounds. It's a 50% increase for a thousand. That's quite a lot, but if you boil that down to shooting 50 cartridges, that's only a few quid. So it depends how you think about it, how much you shoot and how much you care about your shooting. A cheaper shotgun cartridge will be perfect for shooting adequate and average targets. They will generally recoil a little bit more pound for pound. However, depending on what you're after, you can negate that by losing a bit of speed, which again, at average targets, sub 35 yards, which the majority can be, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Good cartridges, firstly, they give you more confidence. I know that is stupid, but it's not, because actually the, having confidence in your gears, the reason we buy better gear, have gun fits, have lessons, all this thing, is to be the best. And that is important. And it was proved to me just the other day, yesterday actually, I was shooting with somebody for a clay tour and we did a long range clay shot challenge. And I, with a good quality shell, like a, well, a whole pro one, a 28 gram seven and a half, broke a 100 yard range found clay, 100 yards. I don't believe these cheap ones could do it. And my reasoning behind that isn't perhaps so much any of the speed or anything, but the lead quantity changes. All of these internal components and external components change as you spend more money. So let's look. I've got probably two of the best cartridges in the world here, Sovereign Parkour and a Sovereign Fiber. So component wise, the plastic hulls generally are fairly similar. You might end up with a slightly thicker plastic on the better cartridge, but sometimes not. The primers are generally the same as well. However, some more expensive brands, certainly over cheaper brands, generally inside of brands, the primers don't change too much. Cheaper primers can be less reliable, be a bit harder, be more fussy. If you're putting them in your gun, you're more likely to get a hard primer and so on and so forth, or a slow one, which is not good. The brass, which generally isn't actually made of brass, by the way, increases in length on more expensive cartridges. What does this do? Well, what a great deal. It in helps you when the cartridge comes in, it goes in and comes out of the gun. Well, make generally for better ejections, looks better. It's a bit like buying a cheap suit versus an expensive suit. They're both suits. One looks good. I know that's not a great deal, but clean ejection, clean feeding is a really important thing, certainly with cartridge cartridge. You don't want anything to break your focus if you are actually shooting at that level. Plus, it's pretty. So, Let's chop it open, shall we? First things first, by the way, you do notice on this parkour that the crimp is slightly nicer as well. I mean, that, that could just be per batch, but it is a nicer, cleaner crimp. Let's cut it open. Shot is the biggest difference in my experience. More expensive ammunition has higher antimony. Antimony is the thing they add to shot to make it harder. With game shooting, it helps Certainly, it kills in slightly different ways to shooting lower antimony shells, but at the end of the day, if you shoot a bird with the right shot size and so on and so forth, it doesn't matter. What's really bad is if you manage to hit a really hard clay target with soft lead and it doesn't have the energy retained because it's softer lead to break it. And I was talking to someone the other day who has a high, a high tower at his ground, who says, make sure you bring a better quality shell because the higher antimony shot will help break the targets. Genuinely. And that, well, I've, I've heard it multiple times, I've experienced it on long range targets. You need that higher antimony level to break long range targets successfully. However, we're talking super long tar range targets, probably not the sort of thing you'll see in competition, but again, confidence, repeatability, and smashing targets is fun. So why not do it properly? All right, so here we go. First things first, as you notice when you take this out, actually, is pound for pound, the shot in the better quality cartridge is, is better quality. You can see it, it's a bit shinier, the bulls are rounder, and if you just look through the super fast cartridge, you can see a few bulls in there with very tiny deformations. How bothered are you about tiny deformations? Probably not, but it's margins that make up the wins. Sometimes, I mean, there is no accounting for good technique and good ability. But it's also nice, I'll put this in here, to go out with good gear. And to be honest, I think buying just the first level up of cartridges with that extra little bit of antimony can make a bit of difference. 
And I say, you don't have to jump from the bottom to the top. It is a real sliding scale. Every few quid extra you spend is a few extra quid they have spent on components. Wad. It's a completely different wad system. It is a little bit thicker, clearly. It is a very different consistency. It's a little bit more malleable, actually, strangely. And again, I'm not so much of an expert. I could tell you what the realistic difference is between a more malleable one and not. However, they're not gonna be putting it in there because it performs worse, are they? So the wad changes. And so, actually, does the powder in some instances. Again, some brands will use the same powder for same things or the same, uh, different ranges, but it's important enough that the wad use and the shot use can change that cartridge fundamentally and be worth just that extra few quid per 100, or for extra few quid per 50. At the end of the day, most shooters probably aren't good enough or don't care enough not to just buy a bog standard shell, seeing as the basic standard shell that we just call, you know, entry level is way better than anything that was around 40 or 50 years ago. We've come so, so far. There are still some real cheap import cartridges and all the UK manufacturers, well, the majority of the UK manufacturers are producing great stuff, even at their entry level. But there are some real cheap import cartridges that yeah, you'll save 20 or 30 quid per 100 for a cartridge whose name you've never seen and will never see again once that pallet has gone. But again, it just depends how much you care about what you're doing. Some people will be like, well, it's a waste of time. I just want to buy the cheapest and go out and knock a load out the air. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. Because like I said, generally speaking, you put it in the right place, a cheap cartridge will smash a clay. Same as if you put an expensive cartridge in the right place, it will smash a clay. This is not complicated stuff. However, if you want to break long range clays a little bit better, shoot a little bit smoother pound for pound as well, that speed, for example, a super fast at 1500 feet per second, and a, a whole sovereign plastic, or I say a whole sovereign fiber at 1500 and a super fast at 1500 feel very different. Final notes. It's amazing what shotgun cartridges can do. You're probably missing, not hitting it and not breaking it at most of the realistic ranges you'll see targets. And it probably won't make a big difference on realistic range English sporting targets between this and this. However, quality of brakes, quality of confidence, quality of pattern, consistency, smoothness, all of this actually puts pay into buying a slightly better cartridge. Why break them when you can smoke them? However, there's nothing wrong with just breaking them. It's a difficult one and everyone will argue it out. But get on a pattern plate, and once you've got on a pattern plate and found a cartridge that your gun does like, go and shoot around. We were at West London before, and the Pro Fiber 28s, I've patterned them a couple of times, but in reality, just shooting clays with them turn them into the little balls of dust. The actual practical application of that cartridge way exceeded the 24 grams I was using just an hour before. It's amazing how a gun can like one, and it will like the others. So let's say we say like, it doesn't really matter, does it? But when a cartridge does the right thing in your gun, you know. You know, when every single clay looks like its center pattern, you know that it's worth the investment. Your gun might do that with super fast, it might do it with Compex, it might do it with any of the entry level brands and qualities of cartridge. However, it might also do it with the best. I don't know about you, but I like using nice stuff. Same reason I don't shoot a bakel. Guys, take care. Goodbye, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, bang them in the comment section below and we'll try and answer them. For the most part, this is not an overcomplicated science. The cheap ones are good. Spending a little bit more will get you a better product. The end. No, not the end. The conclusion there was, but they will both still break a 30 yard target if you point it at it and pull the trigger in the right place. It's more important to go out and have fun than it is to stress and have anxiety about your cartridges. But for me, it's, it's always just spend a couple of quid extra and have one less pint this week, shoot better ammo, it's nice. It's nice. Guys, take care, goodbye.